is going to be real brief because I wasn't planning on talking, um, doing an intro like I normally do because I'm talking through this entire video. I hope you enjoy it. One thing I didn't put in the video is that all my social media and my store um, link is below. So make sure you check those out and like, love, follow, and subscribe, you know, to my channel because I'm going to start doing more how to's and actually talking and explaining. So make sure you look out for the rest of the videos that's coming up and my previous videos that I posted. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope it's helpful for you. So have a wonderful day and thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Today we're going to be making shower steamers. I thought I was recording earlier, but apparently I wasn't. So what you're going to need is a scale, a bowl, a shifter, some baking soda, citric acid, some cream of tartar, I have here some cream of tartar, some cornstarch, yeah, do I got that in focus, some cornstarch, some alcohol, you can use 75% and up on your alcohol. Um, your fragrance oils that you're going to use. I already have mine pre-measured pre in here. Some menthol crystals. And some polysorbate 80. And I have the polysorbate, the menthol crystals, and um, alcohol all in here. You have to pre-mix this because it takes the alcohol crystals a couple of hours to actually to dissolve, so I do mine overnight. Um, as I said, I thought I was recording earlier, but I wasn't. So what I have in here is my 16 ounces of baking soda and a ounce of kelling clay. Oh, I forgot, you need any kelling clay. I'm gonna put everything you need down at the bottom. So you'll know what you'll need prior to making this. So I have those mixed, or well, have those already in here, and I'm going to zero this out, and I'm going to add my two tablespoons of cornstarch. You don't really have to level this out, but you can. So one more tablespoon, Let me get my two tablespoons. So that's two tablespoons of cornstarch. And you're gonna need one tablespoon of cream of tartar. Hope my hand is not too much in the way here. Let me go this way. It's kind of hard doing this when your camera is on your right and you're right handed. So that one tablespoon there. And the reason I use this shifter it's because when you're making bath bombs or shower steamers or anything basically with a lot of powder, you want to make sure everything is kind of small or basically small because if you have lumps, that can cause bumps in your products. So I use this. I'm going to set this aside for a second because I have all the dry ingredients except for the centric acid in here. But it's hard to work with centric acid at times. Well, I'm going to say when you add liquid to it, it's hard to work with it. So what we're going to do, we're going to mix this up and we're going to add our colorant. You don't have to have color, but you can. I'm going to add my alcohol, polysorbate, and the menthol crystals in here. And I'm just going to pour that in there. And the alcohol that you're going to need, I forgot to tell you, is 0.6 of alcohol, 0.2 of polysorbate, and the menthol crystals, 1.5 tablespoons. And this is an ounce of fragrant oil. It is a mix. So it's however you want to mix it. This is basically my sinus one. So when I make my sinus shower steamers, I use peppermint and eucalyptus. But you can use anything from lavender to orange to make them and it smells really awesome. So you get this. 
and this is where you can use a spoon you can use a mixer but I like to go ahead and just use my hands to mix this up so you're just gonna mix all that liquid in and you see it's not as powdery but it is still gonna be some of that powder floating up I hope you're able to see that on the camera but you have that you're gonna mix that in and you can also go ahead and add your color this is a messy um, product to make because of all the dust from the powders but it's pretty fun I like making stuff because it actually relaxes me so it's just I don't know something about making soap my candles just any of my products it's really really relaxing and for those that do not follow me on Instagram, I have my link below for my Instagram account. Go over and follow me. I'm actually getting ready to become an esthetician soon. So I'm really, really excited about that. And it go hand in hand with the products I make because they're all natural and vegan. Everybody wants to have good health all the way around. And plus, all of this is biodegradable, which is super, super awesome when you're dealing with natural and vegan products. That's what basically they are. They are biodegradable. So it's really, really good. So you want to make sure all that color that we put in there is mixed really good. That's why I keep playing with it here. And when you measure out your items such as your cornstarch, not cornstarch, but your centric acid or your baking soda. You don't necessarily have to use a scale, but I prefer a scale because I know my measurements are accurate. You can go ahead and use some measuring cups if you don't have a scale, which is totally fine. But I know how much I'm going to get out of this when I make it. So that's why I use a scale. I started first using measuring cups and each time I would get something totally different when it came down to my bath bombs. So I was like, okay, how can I fix this? Simple, <laughs> use my scale. So that's what I did. And two, when making these products, make sure you use gloves. <sighs> first started out when I was experimenting I was not using gloves for, my, for making products because I was just experimenting. But centric acid can eat off your fingernail polish. So yeah, use your gloves. So now I'm going to pour the centric acid. I'm gonna use my shifter here. And this is a different bowl I'm using. Usually I use a, my clear Pyrex bowls, but I found this bowl and I was like hmm let me see how this is gonna work and it's, it's big so it holds a lot more in here way more than my other bowls do so we're gonna put eight ounces of citric acid in here we're gonna hope this is enough if not I have another big bag over here on, over here by me so we're going to use that, and this is not going to be enough. I'm off by how much here? About 6.2. I need another little bit over an ounce here. So I'm going to put that over here and get my other essential acid. So give me just a second to get that. Hold on. Let's see here. And, of course, my camera moved when I did that. Let's see if I can readjust my camera. Okay, my camera is somewhat back to what it was. So we're gonna finish measuring this out. This is my new bag. So excuse me for having to open that. I thought it was gonna be enough in there. Okay. So I'll continue pouring. And two, when you use the shifter, the sifter. 
if you pour too much, a lot of times, especially if it has clumps, you can take them out easier than have it being your mix. Or you can put them in individual bowls and then put it in one big bowl. But that is almost too much right for me. So I'm just very careful when I do this. And I also make sure all my stuff is closed back so I won't have any accidents. And if you see down at the bottom, you have just a little bit in there. So you can use your finger, a spoon, a fork, and just go ahead and push that through. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna remove my scale. And two, um, also, you don't necessarily have to add your centric acid last. I just prefer to simply because when you add liquid to centric acid, it fizzles, it bubbles and everything. So you don't really want to, you don't want to lose that. So that's why I add it last. So you're going to mix this up really good. And for those who have been looking at my channel for a while, yeah, I moved and my lighting is not so great over here. So I had to buy a boom light, a bigger boom light than what I had to give me some lights. So I'm able to see and my videos will come out a lot better. I miss my sunroom in my old place, but new things, new beginnings. So how you want this to look, you want it firm. So when you put them in the mold, they won't fall apart. So this is exactly the consistency I want. Some people make theirs a little wetter, but I don't. This is like perfect. And that's another reason why I measure out everything so everything can be consistent every time I make something. So mix that a little bit more just to make sure everything is mixed. And when you use eucalyptus, if you have any sinus problems, which I named this one sinus, that eucalyptus and menthol is going to open you up. So be prepared for that. So I am finished mixing everything up. I'm going to clean up just a little bit, enough to get my molds down and clear some of this powder off of my table. So give me just a second and I will be right back. All right, I'm back, and what we're gonna do next, oh, I should've moved that out of my way. Give me a little bit more room. But what we're gonna do next is mold our shower simmers. This is wax paper. I prefer, um, let me move this again. I don't really like wax paper. I prefer the, oh gosh, I can't even remember what the other paper is called. That's called, I'm getting old at this point. Parchment, that's what it is. I like parchment paper better than the wax paper. But only thing I have in there is parchment. So we have our molds and we have our shower steamer mix. I love these rose molds. These are also, I think I got this at Michael's as long as with my square molds. So now next thing you're gonna do, you're just gonna fill the cavities. Just dump it in here, spread it around. Try not to get any on the parchment paper because then you'll be wasting product. But kind of spread it around. My mix is enough to fill this bowl and the majority of my square mold. So. All my measurements. Yeah, this is kind of the tedious part of it. But you're going to spread all this around. And you're going to press down when you have it in there. Let's clear all this out and I'll show you. Okay. Put that in there. You see, I'm pressing down 
on them to make sure they're full. And what you have across the top, go ahead and if it's not full, just press it down. Get more of this like on the top, press it down in it. So you make sure you're using all of your mix in there. So I'm going up to this one and this one. Okay, go ahead and press down all of it so you know which ones that you're going to have to come back and add some more to. That's it, putting it on the top, but at first you can just put a whole bunch of, you know, on here and then just start cleaning up and sweeping to where you want it to go. So now I know these ones, the ones at the top aren't sealed, so I put them in between these two and and just moving it over once that cavity is full and I don't need it anymore. You don't have to work super fast with this because you're gonna have to dry it. Well, I dry mine, some people don't. I leave mine in the mold overnight and then in the morning, I get up and I go ahead and um, unmold them and wrap them. I'm trying, let's see here, press everything down. Need a little bit more on this back one. So kind of, yeah, there we go. That's a lot better. And I put two sheets down of parchment paper, as you saw, and that's basically after I get through filling this, I'm going to move it to the cleaner one and dust off all that fell on my parchment paper and put it back in the bowl because it didn't hit the table. Even though I cleaned my table off, I still just want to use what's on the parchment paper. So, oh, it's taking me a little bit longer, I guess, because I'm running my mouth. But... Yeah, you just fill this in here and there. Okay, all that is full. You can wipe along the excess off because you're going to put it back in your bowl. Yep, yeah. and I press down on every last one of them and clean them up. Okay, and I'm just going to dust that off. And I'm going to move this over. And take this, fold it in half, and just dump it in your bowl. And then this one, I'm just going to speed this up to make it faster. cavities are filled and I'm just shifting this over a little bit so when I move it it won't be bad so I'm gonna have to move this in the morning but all my cavities are filled I pressed all of them down so when I pull them out they won't break either so that's how you make it
make your shower steamer is, is a very easy process only thing i do advise make sure you use gloves and if you want to be consistent use a scale and i'm reaching towards my scale use a scale it they're not a lot of money you can get them at walmart for 15 16 dollars you know just something very inexpensive you know but this is a very easy process and this will help clear up your sinuses when you first make it if you never had um a menthol smell you'd be like oh my gosh but it opens you all the way up that's the main thing about a shower steamer is to open you up and to breathe while you're in a shower so this is how you make it and we're going to come back in the morning and we're going to unmold all the shower steamers we're going to unmold every last one of them and go from there so see you in just a second for the video but for me in the morning so